Welcome back to the channel. Um, so what I'm going to be doing in this video is adding some light to my 2009 Jeep Grand Cherokee WK. This is a photograph of the Jeep uh, before I put any lights on it. And this is the first set of lights that I'm going to be putting on. These are an LED set of um, pod lights. I got these from Nylight. Uh, they provided all the lights that you're going to see in this video. Um, they can be found on Amazon. They are IP68 um, waterproof, so uh, hopefully, you know, standing up to weather without having any condensation built up inside the lenses. Um, we'll see how that goes as we move forward. The issue that I'm running into mostly is uh, mounting hardware and how I'm going to mount these to the hood. I do want these mounted to uh, the passenger side, driver side, on the hood. Um, there are a couple of mounting options available. They're around $40 to $60 just for the mounting hardware and you do have to remove the hardware around the hood to install those. I found these instead. Um, reviews seem to be pretty good. Uh, there's no drilling needed in the hood. You don't have to remove any hardware. Uh, and they're easily removable, so if you want to move your lights to another vehicle or something like that, it's potentially possible with these. Uh, you're using these small set screws on the bottom, and that way, again, you're not drilling anything into your hood. Uh, they tend, they seem to hold pretty well. Here you can see them mounted to the hood of the Jeep, um, and they have a rubber piece across the top. And then underneath, you know, as I said, there are five set screws and I painted these up with red Loctite and before I screw them into place, tighten them down pretty good and over about two weeks, I've not noticed any movement. Uh, they're not getting any, lo any more loose, so that's good. They seem really solid. I did run the wiring under this cowl here where the uh, windshield wipers normally run and then back into the cabin right here. The other light that I decided to mount was a 20 inch LED, again from Nylight. I wanted to mount this uh, under the front bumper. Um, I didn't want it to be uh, too conspicuous, so there is a space uh, where the tow hooks are under the front, and that's where I wanted to mount this light. Uh, it's perfect width that you don't run into any hardware underneath, and I'm going to take a look here so you can see what that looks like. And it gives you about uh, three inches on either side. I could have gone with the 22 inch, but I think the 20, the 20 inch is just fine for this application. Wire runs right back behind the headlight, comes up here alongside the battery, and again, goes back into the cabin. Now you will need a, uh, a wiring harness for this. Uh, I decided to get this wiring harness again, provided by Nylight. I got two of these. Uh, one for the uh, pod lights and one for the LED light bar. Um, they're easy to connect, there's a relay. Um, all I did was swap out the uh, switches um, for a actual switch bank that you'll see installed here um, next to the steering wheel inside the cabin. Right here, again, provided by Nylight. Um, they come with stickers so you can kind of customize what you want it to look like. They also come in different colors if you don't want red. I believe they have blue and green as well. I went with the red and as you can see when you turn them on they light up and so they work out really well. It's easy to install. Uh, again, easy to connect the wiring harness directly to this panel. And here it is in some more light so you can kind of see it a little bit better. I wasn't sure if you could see it in the dark of that other video. Uh, so again, uh, you can cover these up with the stickers to customize it for how you want your lights to look. Um, I think it really details out here where you can tell this is for the pod light, this is for the LEDs, and then I also have a set of rock lights. And what you don't see here on a fourth switch, I put some lights on the rear bumper as well. So here's what the Jeep looked like before I had any lights installed. And here's what it looks like now. Pod lights up on the hood and the LED light bar down below the front bumper. Again before. I took all these photos uh, in the rain. I uh, thought it looked pretty cool with the LEDs on. Um, and here you can see the rock lights that I installed. They are color changing. They do have a remote and they do have an app so that you can change the colors, uh, turn them on and off. But I do turn them on and off inside with a switch. It remembers the last color that you turned it on with or left it on as. Here you can see I, I prefer the red and that's what color I have them on here. And I'll show you the remote and you can see uh, 
you can go directly to the red, blue, green. You can also go white. Uh, you can change the, the brightness. You can go to like a fade or a strobe or whatever you want to do here. There's a lot of options, especially with the app compared to the remote. And I'm just going to take a quick walk around the vehicle. The lights kind of look green in this light, but I think it's the blue of the night plus the amber uh, make them look green, but trust me, they definitely are an amber color. And you can see as I come around the side of the Jeep and look forward that they definitely are a nice bright amber color. And then what you couldn't see or what I didn't have on in the video are my uh, rear lights that I mounted to the bumper. These again provided by Nylite. Uh, they're not reverse lights. I did not connect them to my reverse uh, wire on the vehicle so it doesn't come on when you put it in reverse. It's actually on a switch so I can turn them on and off whenever I want. Next up I'm going to replace the original stereo. Um, I don't like the original stereo. It says that it has Bluetooth and Sirius XM radio and um, its voice prompts and things like that, but none of it seems to work. And maybe that's just because of the um, options, options package on this Jeep. But I installed this radio, um, again, found it on Amazon, and it is 100% plug and play. Uh, the wiring harness, the CAN bus, everything that you take out of the original you plug in to, the, um, to this new stereo and everything works perfect. Um, I, the install uh, took less time than it took me to actually take apart the dash. And you can see here it is taken apart. Um, pretty simple. Again, uh, very straightforward. There's only four screws holding that head unit in place. And here's what the new head unit looks like installed. As you can see, this head unit um, looks much better. It has a 6.2 inch screen. Uh, you can plug in your USB to have pre-recorded music or MP3s listed on there. Uh, there are hard buttons to go to the navigation or straight to menu. Uh, the navigation uh, works very well. Uh, it's iGo Primo. Um, doesn't have to have an internet connection. It has traffic updates. Um, it seems to be pretty fast. You can change the voice uh, interaction. There's a lot of uh, customization in there. Uh, the radio works perfectly fine. I found no issues there. You can set up your reverse camera. You can set up a forward-facing camera. You can set up Bluetooth with your phone. Uh, a lot of options here. You can mirror your phone screen if you want. Um, again, just a lot of options and functionality in this head unit. So thank you very much for taking the time to watch the video. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section down below. If you'd like me to review the head unit um, more in depth, uh, please leave a comment down below and I'll make a separate video. Um, I will try to do an update uh, as these lights get used and are out in the weather. Um, it has been, we are entering the rainy season here in Florida, so we're going to experience a lot of wet weather and humidity. So we'll see how these lights hold up against any kind of water intru intrusion and um, I'll make any updates that I feel are needed. Um, but again, thank you very much for watching. Please consider subscribing and please hit the like button down below.